Let's begin with one of Liszt's earlier pieces. It's from the first set, the Swiss years of his great nature studies titled Years of Pilgrimage. And we'll have Au Bord d'une Source, which is one of the most perfect water pieces ever written and shows Liszt's Impressionism already in 1848. Let's hear Jerome Rose. Nature Study by Franz Liszt, which gives us yet another aspect of this composer, the lover of nature, and this, of course, is one of the prime movements in Romanticism, in painting, in poetry, and in music. It came perhaps a little later. It took composers a while to find out how to explore instruments via the world of nature. <laughs> 
But that performance was not too good. Let's hear another one by Gunnar Johansson, Liszt's O Bordun Source. That was List the Nature Poet, O Bordun Source, and it's a gorgeous piece. And that performance by Gunnar Johansson got more to the point. Alice Levine Mitchell writes, The virtuoso demands of the etude are of a special order, requiring great accuracy for the large leaps of the left hand crossing over the busy right, great endurance because of the perpetual motion of the filigree work in the right hand, and maximum control to perform with necessary delicacy the extended passages in varying shades of softness. You know, Matt, this work doesn't sound that difficult, but it is very, very tricky. Uh, Liszt prefaced this work with a quotation by Schiller, one of his favorites. In murmuring coolness, the play of young nature begins. Let's hear now a performance of this work by a pianist not yet on the list series, Sergio Fiorentino.
Faubourg en Source from the Swiss album of The Years of Pilgrimage by Liszt. Liszt lived with the Countess Dagou in Switzerland for several years. The performance was Sergio Fiorentino and it was good but not good enough. And I hope Horowitz appeases my desire for a better performance. He will. board during source of list in a performance by Horowitz which more than fulfills my expectations and I would like us all to hear it again because it's Horowitz that is most poetic
And with Horowitz, Schiller's lines are realized. In murmuring coolness, the play of young nature begins. This is not list of the autobiographical inner turbulence telling us of his greatness and his flaws, but an objective nature portrait, yet another side of this vast 19th century figure who lived the whole century through, so to speak, from 1811 to 1886. We'll be back with David Dubal in just a few moments. Some lines from Byron's Child Herald, which was certainly one of Liszt's favorite poets. The lines are, Thy contrasted lake with the wild world I dwell in is a thing which warns me with its stillness to forget earth's troubled waters for a pure spring. Let's hear performance by Gunnar Johansson of Olak de Wallenstadt by Franz Liszt. Wallenstadt by Liszt from his years of pilgrimage. They were composed, this whole set, uh, in the 1830s when he lived there. And it's indeed very Swiss in feeling. The left hand is very 
very interesting in this piece. Almost all the same figuration throughout. Let's hear another performance. That was Gunnar Johansson, and we have Jerome Rose up. at Wallenstadt by Franz Liszt, and it certainly isn't Liszt the flashy, is it? It's a beautiful nature piece, and have you ever heard it before? Well, the strange thing is that it has a, a sort of familiar quality to it, but no, I, I can't say that I have. Right, it's, it's virtually unknown. Another performance, this time, Sergio Fiorentino. Thank you. 
on the lake at Wallenstadt, or Lach to Wallenstadt, by Liszt, and that performance by Fiorentino. We'll be back with David Dubal in just a moment. Okay, Liszt is in, at this moment, Geneva, Switzerland, with his illicit relationship with the Countess d'Agou, who left great social position in Paris, wealth, and her children. And it's not an easy time. He's not playing concerts. He has not too much money. And yet again, poor Franz gets himself into something done for free. He teaches at the Geneva Conservatory for nothing. He's now at the age of 24. It's the first year of uh, their 10 years together, the Countess and Liszt. And uh, he has a notebook that's been preserved about some of his pupils at the uh, Geneva Conservatory. And it was at this time that he was writing these nature pieces, the sights and sounds of Switzerland. Anyway, he says, Julie Raffar, very remarkable feeling for music, very small hands, brilliant execution. Amalek Kalam, pretty fingers, works hard and carefully, almost too much so. Could teach, though. Marie Dalmeyer, vivacious technique, if technique there be. I don't understand that. Extreme zeal, but little talent. Grimaces and contortions. Glory to God in the highest and peace to all men of good will. Then, of course, there's dear Ida Milique, Swiss artist, flabby and mediocre, quite good deportment at the piano. And then there's Jenny Cambini, beautiful eyes. <laughs> I don't know how seriously he took his free teaching at the conservatory, but they, they were amazed that they had this already world-famous artist there, and uh, he didn't hang around too long. Actually, they lived on Dagu's money, is that what happened? Or was she cut off by her husband, or what? Well, at that moment she was cut off, but I doubt that she ever experienced a moment of poverty in her life. Let's now hear another piece from the Years of Pilgrimage Swiss album, composed in the 1830s, and it's a lovely pastoral. Liszt's Pastoral, another unknown piece by this prolific master. A very pretty piece of alpine poetry, don't you think, Matt? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Okay, uh, another performance of this, because we don't hear it much, and that was a good performance we heard, very naive and 
quality I liked. Uh, who is this? Jerome Rose? Okay. Jerome Rose in Liszt's Pastoral. Well, now let's hear an alpine storm, Orage. And this, of course, has Liszt's pyrotechnical genius in it. Again, very seldom played. We have Sergio Fiorentino playing Liszt's Storm.
Alpine Storm, described by Liszt in that work, Orage. And Sergio Fiorentino was the pianist, and today we've been walking with Liszt all around Switzerland. And we'll continue with music by this revolutionary composer on our next program. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>